the, uh, the minutes from June 19th. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Yes. Public comment. Mm -hmm. It's open for place. public comment if you wish to. Yeah. Just. Outstanding. All right. In that case, uh, okay. we're going to discussion items. School committee meeting schedule. All right. So. Um, as you know, I sent out a proposed meeting schedule change in August. We went to chairs to change the September meeting, but it really should be voted upon by the full committee to change the full year. Um, looking at the schedule and for those watching, um, basically what I did is I stacked meetings um, outside of the budget preparation months of so in September, November, December. And in January, February, and March, our regular regular evening, six o'clock start. You're the only thing on the agenda. Only thing for me to go to mm -hmm. um, that evening because those meetings can go on longer, and we have outside groups coming in, that kind of thing. Um, so basically, it's an attempt to reduce the number of evenings I have out. It's also negotiation year, so the number of expedition meetings I'll be at is going to be whatever. So I'm just trying to get some kind of balance. Um, you know, uh, we did the first. Uh, Week last week, where Waitley actually went to a day meeting, so they had an 8 a.m. meeting, and it was interestingly fun. Yeah. Uh, and they, they actually enjoyed it, and then uh, we did two in a row that evening, and it worked out all right. Um, it's something we're going to have to figure out. There's big you know, uh, crises that they're trying to work through, and we think we need more time to be present at the meeting. But right now, at 6.45, I have to leave. The meeting can continue, because it's your meeting, not my meeting, um, but if you feel that I need to be present for that kind of thing or something comes up in advance, we just have to adjust. But I appreciate the initial start to do a, a change. And so I, I guess we're looking for a vote to approve that for this year. And that's obviously, we have to add meetings or things come up, that certainly that's what happens. This is an attempt to reduce bad feel. Sorry about me. Motion. Yeah. Sounds like a motion. A motion to, to approve as submitted. Yeah, I, uh, any discussion? I, uh, I don't think, I don't think I was any better at, <laughs> I was scurrying to be at 6 o'clock and I was scurrying to be at 5.30, it's just always like, uh, so that's, yeah. I mean, honestly, if we needed to experiment with other things, I'd open it up too, so. We were looking at the next meeting's a joint meeting. Right. So, yeah. um, you know, we'll get the curriculum directors kind of their show for the most part that we need to remember. Um, before. We had, I've only been in one of those regularly scheduled joint meetings in April, and after that meeting, we had individual school committee meetings for yeah. a short period of time. With this one in October, do we do the same thing or not? It's a joint meeting again because it's the <clears throat> presentations by basically uh, Louise Law and Sarah Mitchell, the right. presentations of overall how testing's going, what the professional development looks like, just kind of things the whole committee needs to hear at once rather than be repeated right. five different steps. They also then, you break out from that meeting to go to individual meetings okay. in, in, inside the Frontier Library. So we say, you know, someone goes over there, they reopen their yep. meeting over there, and then they can finish if there's any warrants and, and that kind of business to be done. Okay. Um, that's the idea there. So Thank you. it's also, I think it's also healthy to hear what other schools are doing and um, within that when they talk about the, the programming. Uh, I think it's separate. I think it's healthy just to see the other school things too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although you guys seen a lot of each other in the last yeah. <laughs> six months, but. Uh, I think it's a good attempt. I know that the number one problem is, is the volume of meetings. It's always been a problem. I see it in other districts too, so I think it's a good
some are building a maintenance update. Sure, and actually um, I highlighted some of the maintenance um, that was done um, over the summer in my principal's report. Um, if you'll notice, uh, at the bottom of the first page, a AC mini split system was uh, installed in one of our classrooms. Uh, the reason behind this is that we always have summer programs, um, and it's in, in, uh, an annual thing. Um, and we might be looking to add another mini split in the future. Um, this summer, we uh, hosted three separate summer programs for students with extended school year. Um, and as we all know, um, at times over the summer, it's pretty brutal from a... Um, such a cold summer. <laughs> yeah, such a cold summer. Um, and a great start to school as well, right? Um, so, and that was, uh, that came out of the SNED grant um, for $6,727.94. Um, last year, we applied for two capital projects through the town of Sunderland. Um, one was the hot water heater that was replaced in late August, uh, this past August, and uh, for $17,975. So those are the two main um, summer projects that took place in addition to the cleaning of the entire building and washing and waxing the floors. And you have stuff here in the report also on the security camera system. Yes, yes, I, I can talk about that as well. Um, so we have um, uh, the plan from the technology department was to have three separate vendors come in and do a survey and site analysis of the school. Um, end of October, um, the plan is to finish the site visits with uh, vendors, November review proposals, technologies, and choose a vendor. And then once the vendor is chosen, um, we're hoping to uh, have that installed sometime in February for a fully working new security camera system. Um, and, that, and that was the second of two uh, capital funding projects that uh, we applied for last year. And the technology folks at, uh, in the central office are riding herd on that? Yes. Yep. Yep. Good. Good. And, um, and Darius, you could speak to this, but um, Frontier has replaced its camera system and through phases over the past few years. Um, and they, they put in a system that allowed cameras to be added um, over time, um, just so it wasn't one big lump sum cost. The... I can explain what you just did. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. Anyway, yeah, so basically you know? put the system with the server capacity to have more than yeah. <clears throat> right. dozens of cameras, and you just keep adding every year, and you start adding in different spots, and. And you keep that quiet where we're adding, they just kind of go up and the coverage is close to 100% there now. And right. the same thing will happen here. And Good. some of the cameras um, were installed by the tech staff, but it's just a matter of weighing how much would that cost to have the vendor install rather than a tech department with the amount of time it takes for them to do it. They could be doing other things as well. Okay. So, thank you. The hot water heater, that was one that had like a small crack that was. That was the boiler. the boiler. That was the boiler. Where do we stand on that? Um, one, uh, two, two, one of the plates that the plate that cracked has since been replaced. And I forget the exact numbers on that. That was upwards to ten thousand for that plate. Um, the long-range plan for that back room, um, Bob Lesko, our head of facilities, has identified a bunch of other things that. Um, can take place, um, and I can have those for another meeting. What the numbers in that? What's that? You have the numbers in You have those? Yeah. Oh, you, you printed it. Okay. Um, $17,975 is spent on removing the old hot water heater and installing the new. Um, what we want to do this fall is to clean out some of the miscellaneous things that are in the room how to wash the space, um, and <clears throat> um, and then within that, they replaced the old tank with a rebuild, replaced the oil spill containment area, um, 
install boil water pump tampering pump, prevent the crack layer sections. We were talking about replace the oil lines. Um, and then there was a mis miscellaneous pipe and duct insulation that had to be done. And then the floor tiles had to be replaced in the boiler. So, so if the 179, so <coughs> That was all part of that 17 million. Encompass the other. So that was that covered more than just putting in yeah. a new yeah. water heater. Yeah. Was prepping the, was prepping the space for that. Well, the I oil was, line going to it. I thought those were additional projects that get Do you want to do that additionally? Yeah. Yeah. Because I was going to ask about the oil line. That was one of those things that we had. To yeah. To. I'm sorry. There was still it was 17 million to do that part. Those right. other things are um, stuff that needs to be done. It but still need to be done. Those are all on the yeah. same as wish list. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There was an oil level monitor as well. Yeah. Um, so our oil tank did not have a working gauge and it had to be, the oil level had to be evaluated manually with the dipstick. Um, and so the parts that they make, the parts for their particular system are not made anymore and they would have had to do really? a refurbished one, right? Um, so I think that's kind of part of the long-term plan for that area. Okay. This is Mark. Mark, what's your last name again? Uh, Chapulis. Chapulis. Mark Chapulis is the a representative from TMS, who's um, essentially our business manager right now. And we'll be providing their financials as soon as he gets himself situated. Yeah, so as far as building projects, those are the main things that, that took place. We did that the AC. That work well for that for the space. What's the best room in the school? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Leave it's the most comfortable. Up. Most comfortable room in the school. Yeah, the park. Yeah. yeah, my office is going to relocate next year. <laughs> <laughs> summer programs. Summer programs. Uh, Sunderland stayed quite busy over the summer months. Um, three separate programs. Uh, that uh, focused on academic, social, behavioral, and communication services for our students. Um, our SES staff um, worked those programs as well as reading the math camps, which took place at Deerfield Elementary School and the Ventures Camp, which took place at Lakeland Elementary School. Personnel update. Personnel update. New instructional assistants, uh, Megan Ament. Angelica Hazelton, Georgia Costigan, Iris Evernow, Angel Jackson, Sarah Monders, Elizabeth Nelson, and Lisa Tafano. New faculty members, um, uh, uh, Casey Mathias, and this was the position that we added um, to, to, our, uh, to our team. Um, remember that the funding for this position is pulled from about four or five different pots of gold. Aaron Sears, a new preschool teacher, and Selena Spearing, who was an instructional assistant at Sunderland last year. We moved her to a co-teaching role in the Horizon program, and now she's our new special education teacher. Uh, tutors and short-term uh, subs. Natalia uh, Demsevich is a Turkish tutor in grades four and five. Minekse Sikar is a Russian tutor in pre-K. Sarah Yi and Sunny Park are Korean tutors in grade one. Um, Lin Zhu Chen is a Chinese tutor in grade two. Um, well, only both uh, Natalia and Minexe are um, paid tutors, and the other tutors are volunteers. Um, and then Tanya Manette is a short-term PE sub through the end of September, which is when uh, Heidi Jibo, our phys ed teacher, returns. 
from returning. You ready? Sure. Good. Um, so in front of you, I have the results of operations for the school through today, um, beginning with July 1st. As, at this point in time, 10% of the budget has been expended. We've been going through the process on the budget side of getting in all the salaries and the salary adjustments that have occurred in the throughout the summer. Um, if you look at the budget, uh, for the most part, it is all in the positive. There are a couple um, negative ones I'll draw your attention to. Uh, the first one being if you go to the one, two, three, four, five, six section, which is salaries for curriculum. Uh, the curriculum is stipend to be over the summer of 2740. Um, that line is, is not funded. If you look at the budget last year, however, the budget was not, that line was not funded. And there were $6,200 in expenditures. So we'll have a conversation as to whether or not we do the um, budget transfer to fund that line or allow it to run over as it did last year, because obviously the amount budget did not run over, but that line um, has not been funded. Last year initially. And then also on the second page towards the bottom, there's another line for professional development of teachers, which is over by $215, and then that was the workshop that took place during the summer. Um, and that's another line that we have with the building principal about perhaps doing a transfer to um, fund to bring that line to, to balance to zero. Other than that, the other line that's over is transportation by 41 cents. So to speak, thanks, Greg. Uh, to speak to the professional development um, on your budget analysis sheet here, uh, I think a few lines up is our the line item with around fifteen thousand plus dollars in it, which is where professional development comes out of. Um, and so for some reason, it was logged into a, a line item here that um, does not have any money in it. So mm -hmm. we are. You know, perfectly fine with professional development. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you understand that what, <clears throat> what Patty Cabin and the previous business manager was trying to do in some of those lines was track, even though they weren't funded, she was creating lines so that we can track the funding from year to year. So then that, and so even though, you know, she was taking like, you know, professional development and then creating subcategories with that and then paying it, you know, transferring it later in the year so that you get an idea of what you're spending on some of the costs. Because at some point you want to be able to say, what do we cost, you know, what are the cost of the summer to run, what are, you know, those kind of things. And that's, mm -hmm. that's my guess of what's happening right. there. And she would transfer that later on, depending on, so we can and accurately uh, budget. The, the example would be if um, one of our smart boards, the light bulb is doing that, we wouldn't take money out of the textbook line item for the light bulb. We would put it in the technology line item, even if we were over there, so that we had a sense of how much money we're spending on a daily basis. I, mean, I think one of the things you have to keep in mind is lines go over, I mean, life happens, and you can try to budget, but not every expense falls and you to budget. And when that happens, you just look at your expenditures and you adjust the lines that you didn't spend. Well, trying to prepare for the future as well. Exactly, because this will prep us for lines. We know we have expenditures that happen. Um, it sounds like from what you just said that you, you know, your way of presenting stuff to us is going to include your uh, analysis of what problems there might be or what places we might be, you know, in particular good shape or something like that. I, I guess I'm saying I hope that's your intention because um, that certainly is to me much more uh, useful than just being handed a sheet of numbers and said, you know, if you got any questions, call me. Right. Um, so that, you know, there's not much in this one, obviously, in the particular of problem that gets, you know, there'd be more things to consider as time goes on. And so I'm, I'm just saying that I both hope and sort of expect that part of the monthly financial report is, you know, something that just says, okay, guys, here are the problems and you know, or maybe no problem, everything's fine, or whatever it is, just rather than sort of counting on us to dig through this and try and find it. Exactly. To your, to your point, I mean, there's no point in going through every single number. You want to know what 
the issues are. Right. And when you start out this time of the year, luckily there's almost never any issues. And as you go through the year, you might have spent tuitions that end up impacting you. And that's right. the type of stuff I want to let you know because we don't want you to have any surprises as to anything that you know might cause the budget to go off plan to the degree that you know you need to address it or, or have concerns about it. Right. Great. Terrific. Thank you. I just got a couple quick questions. So, Mark, I appreciate you coming in. And it's kind of short time to get cut up to speed too. But, Darius, who do we meet at Frontier tonight as a business? Brian. Brian, now, Mark, is Mark going to be with us every time or will we be rotating out? Will Brian be here? Or how, how's that all going to I'm assuming you and, and Brian are working with the same group okay. and have a bird's eye view. So, just how is that all going to play out with the, the five schools? And well, I mean, we're going to have to we'll have to alternate based on our schedules to a degree. I mean, he's I'm here because he's on vacation, but certainly, I mean, he and I both need to be up to speed on all the schools in the region. So it could be either one of us or both of us. Uh, but we both you know, need to be fully aware of any of the issues going on with the school right now. So it'll be either Mark or Brian. Are you about to take off? No. Okay. Yep. So if I have something that sort of touches on finances, is now a time to ask it or? Yeah, I wanted to just at some point ask about um, just looking ahead. And I realize it's early in the year, but just looking ahead, and what I see are challenges that we're going to have come this winter in terms of putting together a budget for next year. And I just wanted to mention these and grades of visibility. And one would be uh, that it seems like we're going to lose the sixth grade at the end of this school year that has only one class in it. And so we're going to need one more, we're going to have one more class in fiscal year 20 than we do in this year. One more classroom. And that's a sort of space issue, and I know I talked to you a little bit about it last, you know, earlier this year, and I'm not sure, you know, we have to come up with a solution there. And I assume it also means another teacher, uh, which has a budget impact. So that's certainly one thing. Um, and then the other thing that at some point if we could get um, brought up to speed on what plans might be is the Horizons program because my understanding is that there's going to be a change in the uh, people are aging out. I mean, sixth graders are aging out after this year. And so how that program is going to look in you know, a year from now might be substantially different and how the dollars work out, I would be concerned, but I really don't have a clue. But I think that's something that I would like to get some attention paid to both those things sooner rather than later because we, you know, the one and the extra teacher certainly has an impact you know, on the way we like on the budget and the horizons one, I'm not sure if it scares me because the number is different. Well, what's interesting is either you're coaching Ben or Ben is coaching you because Ben has had the same conversation with me. Okay. Um, Clint, we haven't even talked about that. that that's yeah. so, well, to me, it was exactly the conversation Ben had with me that we need to really sit down we had a conversation about sitting down and really going through about how we can adjust things right. and prepare for that. Because you're exactly right. You hit the you hit every not, single point on the head, like it, it, like you were coached by that. No, I haven't talked so to him. Just, just one or the other. It just <laughs> where, you know what you're looking at when you talk, when you think about okay, carry for the budget to the next year, okay. And I've talked to you, Darius, about how you know the town was generous and and and, and I, I, in my opinion, you know, smart enough to approve the override, but that's a one-time thing. I mean, don't go back to that well mm -hmm. again for a while and so you know then you're hoping that the, the budget for the for next year is going to you know be comparable to this one with the normal you know assumed you know inflationary increases or something like that well here are a couple of things that you know might throw a monkey wrench into that so mm -hmm. that's why i want some thought you know i wanted you're already ahead of me but you know i want to be thinking about that because I'm not sure how you know how bad the problem will be and how, how we, what the options are for figuring it out. Right. And that's the part we, when we spoke. We that's the next step that we have to do is kind of project out what exactly are the numbers and start working with those numbers. Um, 
because while every year is a, every budget year you're going to have different challenges, we can, as we just kind of stated out, it is very clear that we have some significant ones because of changing programming. So we are actually having, and so um, and all the different numbers that have to do with it because enrollment is the special programs, they can the tuitions, they may, you know, you know, all the I mean, certain on both the revenue side, side and, and so it's, it's on the revenue side, it's on the expense side, and you know, I, I'm sort of scared how that's going to play out. So, okay, thank you. We also have to be prepared for school choice. It's always a, a, a difficult one to work yeah. through each year, particularly here. Yeah. So I think realistically, by the November meeting, we will have some sort of um, what's the term you used before? It was in your office. It was in your office. Um, you called it a delta. Delta. You, you call it a delta. Basically, they'll have a, a, a we'll have a, an idea of what those numbers look like for the changes. Because I like to have it well before right. budget season, so that we can then start get how creative can we get with the overall budget to how to address it, and look at how you know, how much do we need to address? Because I, I think be, I don't I have no idea that the numbers overall. We're talking 20, 50. You know, what is the what are the numbers we're adjusting? And then you got to look at the whole thing from teachers coming and going, and those with the difference in salary ranges. Um, <clears throat> so on and so forth. So. And and I was I was impressed when your boss made the presentation to our you know that led to us hiring the firm that one of the things he passed out was a list of various things you've done at different districts where you worked that had increased efficiency of the way you know or improved processes or various things that you've made the organ you know the operations smarter better whatever and so. That's also something I hope that there will be opportunities that we will find here to find stuff that we can do better, smarter, um, more cost-effective, all that sort of stuff. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. I can tell you, one thing for me that's like a, a, a perpetual, and I feel like it, it's kind of gradually improved over time, but if we can continue that process, is um, understanding the full cost of uh, all line items, not just the cost that's coming out of the, the town budget piece of it, um, so that, you know, because uh, it, you know, can mask, it can look like something's gone up or down, and really it's actually just that the source, you know, there's either some source went away for funding it, and so now more of it's coming out of the town, or, you know, or vice versa, and, and it, it's just always, ends up being a source of um, confusion as we're going through that budgeting process. So the ability, you know, and Patty was doing more of that um, at the end, really kind of making it clear how, but, it, but really at an aggregate level, but, but, but it was broken down a little more than this last year in terms of what is the total cost of, you know, these different things for the school. So. Well, we typically, we have a format when we budget and it, it, we call it the all funds approach but what it is basically is you have your total dollars that it takes care of the school you have your local appropriation right the difference between that hopefully is made up of other funding sources being in grants uh, individual grants any special revenue that you have uh, you know school choice circuit breaker so we bought that out on page so that you know anybody who looks at it including us can say okay the expectation is we have x number of dollars in this teacher line and this amount is going to come from the local, this amount is going to come from school choice. And that way, when the budget actually becomes reality and these numbers start coming in, and you put real numbers in based on projected, you know, you know, do you have a, a positive or negative situation in that that line, and you look at it all on one page without saying, here's this report, is that report? Um, it's just an easier, you know, one sheet look at the overall funding sources from the school. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for putting up with my questions. Here's the chair. Yeah. Good. Um, MDSC, MDSS joint conference. All right, so for the joint conference in November, um, I believe Peter, you've signed up. Mm -hmm. The committee actually has to vote to make you the voting member while attending the conference. Do I have to be a voting member? 
you don't have to vote. You have to throw that question. I don't know what happens if you don't vote. No, um, I mean, at the end, you have to go to the darn meeting. I mean, that to me would be the least useful of the meetings I might go to. <laughs> I don't think, uh, uh, while you're there, I don't think you, I don't, it just means you can vote. I mean, okay. You, you, I'm there's not, not an obligation. Give me a meeting. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure how heavy some of these votes that they're voting on is from. Yeah. Anyway, I was planning on going, so yeah. And I don't gather anyone else is. Because okay. I'm pretty sure I was a voting member one time year and I I didn't vote that. The motion to designate uh, <laughs> <laughs> Peter as our voting representative at the NASC. Uh, Second. Any more discussion, I assume? All in favor? Uh, unanimous. Uh, all right, great. I'll be sure Donna sends that in. So. <laughs> if there's a controversial vote, you can be there. <laughs> you you <laughs> represent. Look out for Bob Decker. He'll drag you in. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> he will. <laughs> Negotiations represent. All right, yes. You guys had already um, reorganized. Correct? Correct. Um, I assume so, since we're not doing that tonight. They reorganized in June yeah. um, prior to my coming. But you did not elect um, someone to the negotiations team. Um, it is a negotiations year, and so we will be looking for someone to represent someone in the union. Union negotiations. So. Do the. What is uh, the. What is the composition of the negotiation team on the. Uh, Side. So, the super, well, the school, well, oh, please. Say, superintendent and typically council shows up, and then the members of other committees. And, and like select board, uh, and the select they, board take part? Uh, yeah, they appear yeah. was, so, in, was so on this last time. All right, so basically what it is is that uh, a school team member from each of the four towns and a um, uh, town government member doesn't have to be select board, it's not select board, it's finance. Sometimes it's town administrator okay. um, as well. But they're part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, um, and then I act as support to that. So technically, you're the ones that are making. I'm there with you, but it's yeah. you're the negotiation. And the spokesperson is usually the attorney, which um, I talked to <coughs> Russ DeGree, who is our has been our attorney, him and his brother Adam. Um, I don't know who's doing what yet, but I was on the phone with him today. Um, it's, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be him, but it's going to be the final word. It depends on schedule. So we're going to have four going. We have two units here, um, teachers and um, instructional assistants, and the same thing's happening up there too. So there's four, there's four units being fired this year. So it's a, a few meetings. So, it's really the chair's job to appoint somebody, but usually someone offers themselves up to appoint. <laughs> and I've done it before. It's not an hours. I'm willing to do it. But also, if you have an interest in doing it, then you've done it with different. I, you talk to me? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm not eager to do it. Uh, <laughs> I'll throw myself on that. I think, the, I think the authority that you would have as chairman of this committee would be enough right there. Yeah, let's do that. Second. Right. Do we need to approve it or is he just a point? It sounds like it. The chair appoints, but why don't you vote approval? That way we don't run any problems. Yeah, yeah. All in favor? Anyone else? That way he can say later on, he threw himself on there and he wanted <laughs> to do it. Yeah, and yeah, he's a uh, totalitarian type of says we have to have a vote, too. Yeah. Okay. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Donna. Revisions to policy. All right. I'll walk you guys through the policy. How, I don't know how you normally um, do them here. If you do things individually or if you kind of group them together. Um, <clears throat> but there are two revisions and then there are two new policies. So. The two revisions are first the meal charge policy. Um, if you look at the second page of it, the new um, the new wording is in red, and the deleted wording is is struck, struck through. 
basically they're striking out, punishing students who have um, um, OS money through the lunch program, uh, basically by denying them access to senior graduation activities. We never really do that anyways, but um, that, and that's policy. to clarify. That's for the high school. That's the high school. Right. All, all students. You can't do the same thing with sixth grade either. You can't right. graduate unless you pay your lunch bill. You right. can't do that. Anymore. Yeah. All right. And then, um, and then failure to maintain um, accounts can be referred be referred to the superintendent. And my job is to make sure that there's controls in place for this. Not a big change there. Um, you got to do it one by one. You grow them as a group. We we vote as a group. All right. The second one is student activity accounts. Um, again, this is mostly affecting the secondary, but there are student activity accounts that here. Um, but uh, it's more, you know, basically it's making sure that you wrap up those accounts after three years. Um, speaking as the, you know, as, as the frontier principal there last year, we had accounts that class accounts that were ten years old. We were holding on to them for them to come back and use it for their. Um, reunions and stuff and that kind of thing. And so finally, um, you know, we got, you know, when we were audited, they were saying we need to clean up. So we started the cleanup process there, reach out. And it's a lot of fun, as I said, at the other school committee meeting, it's fun reaching out to someone who's class treasurer and they're like, I was? I'm like, oh yes, you were. It's looking at the program at graduation. Um, we need your signature to, for you to take these funds. And so basically it's making sure that you contact two people and um, move those funds along. It's, and also funds, if you have some debt accounts, I haven't seen your accounts here, but you may have an account that you could have done a fundraiser four, four years ago and it hasn't had any activity. You've got to move those accounts to stay out. We have one student activity staff. That covers everything, covers everything. All in and out. So. And it doesn't get audited at any, at any time ever? Who's that? Is it, it, has it been audited ever? I assume so, right? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I know Frontier's accounts were audited as part of the auditing that's done each year at the regional level. But I can find out. I mean, the, I assume that this is this account is is this held by our town account. Yes, and this, this and those yeah. funds. Are, so it's probably been audited the fact that the funds exist. I was thinking more of is there a subdivision of that account into its various parts, like you know, for whether it's for different classes or different groups or different whatever. Um, I'm sure that the audit we get from the, you know, from our town auditor is just, yep, there's that amount of money and it's in the bank. Mm -hmm. But not beyond, you know, well, who's got what share of it or who's it owed to or who might be, you know, who might be, for, you know, might it be for a sixth grade that left here six years ago. Right. And it's just sitting there not being used. And can, you know. So is it broken up into sub? We can look into this and it's get back. It's broken up into a couple different so it's broken up into a couple different subcategories. Yeah, there's, and that's, and that's, yeah there's, there's the main Central Student Activity Account, which we put um, fundraising money in, nature's classroom tuition, which we pay out of. Um, anytime donations, or sometimes when donations are made to the school, we have folks make it up to the Central Student Activities Account so that it's used for scholarships moving forward. Um, I think there's a, there's a library section to it as well. Um, yeah, it's been very, very So when you see you have one account, that's, that's how most student accounts are set. Right. Feel free to jump in. Um, yeah, that. some of those probably have to be separate. Um, like gift accounts should be separate from tuition accounts. So it's something we should look into. Okay. I know SE's guideline is usually that accounts, student activities accounts get out of these for every three years. So we should probably look into something that's been involved in. All right. So we can, yeah, we can look in and see if, um, they could, have, they could have been out of it. just something I don't come in here with that. Yeah, it's not a high priority, obviously, right. but it's just something that, you know, yeah, okay. We have oh, it's something that it needs to be checked. Yeah, no, it's definitely something you want to be checked because it also, Ben wants it to be checked too because it's, a lot, it's money in and out. And you want to make sure that you're. Right, you're and clean. there also may be money there that, you know, is not got any uh, use, of, you know, at this point. It could be used for something, you know, used for something else, actually. Yeah. Rather than just sitting there. All right, so that was that one. And then the next one is, um, this is a new MESC policy for um, children in foster care. Now these are practices that we've already been doing, um, but basically it's um, working with DCF to, if students are in your district and um, 
they need to be placed outside of the district with another family, they're allowed to stay within the district. Also, families that are taking students into our district and um, they deem the student needs to come to the school, that we don't slow down the process, that we, you know, um, we recognize the, the urgency to get the student into the schools and that kind of thing. So that's kind of, it's basically a state law, uh, but we've been following that either way. And then the last one is the um, educational opportunities for military children. This one was put into place, I guess, more for the secondary level, but I guess it could happen at the elementary level as well. But um, students who are uh, members of military families and are getting moved from base to base, um, many times moved mid-year, can be penalized for coming in mid-year. You don't have enough credits. I mean, we have the same thing with, I mean, talking about from the secondary perspective, students who transfer in their junior year may not have enough credits to graduate on time. What they're doing is they're saying within this, this law that you can't be punishing military families. Um, and you should do your best to find credits, um, offer credits, or um, make up credits and immediately place them into classes. It's not their fault that their families are in transition um, as they serve the country, uh, serve our country rather. So um, that's basically what that is. We don't have a lot of them, but it is from time to time we make those too. That's what we're borrowing to. Yeah. And then basically it puts them in there too. Again, it's not something we normally we try to do those kind of things anyways, but this is now now the way we try to do that with all families, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's not like you have a, a new student and you say, Oh, you can't enroll them and then two weeks you gotta wait for the next quarter to start. They're saying you can't do that here. So these sound all pretty straightforward. Yeah. These sound all pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing fancy there. There's motion to approve uh, the four uh, policies. Two of them are revisions, two are adopting new policies as, as presented. Second. Any discussion?
Darius or with Ben in terms of saying, hey, you guys ought to come to this meeting because we're going to be talking about school stuff, kind of things. And uh, there was a meeting last winter where uh, you and Lynn and Bob all showed up and we got basically the approval in that one meeting uh, to do these couple of capital projects. And so this is like, you know, on the one hand we've got like probably another round of smaller capital projects coming up, but the bigger picture is we've got this whole study so that even this next round of capital projects for the town is going to, I think the effort could be trying to fit those within a much bigger picture stuff. Now, Bob Lesko also produced a uh, plan, you saw the spreadsheet with a number of different items, short term, medium term, longer term, and so on. Um, I noticed in reading this one we just got that, you know, I saw a couple of things that they didn't identify, like dealing with the oil tanker. Okay, so there's going to be probably some stuff on, you know, somebody, you know, whether it's Bob or, you know, whoever needs to sit down and say, okay, what might be left off the town thing, because we want to make sure we've got everything you know, on the table, okay? And to me, so you've sort of got, on the one hand, you've got, uh, you know, Bob continuing to work on stuff, okay? And then you've got this going to the town, and I don't see them as competing. I see them as this is, like, giving more visibility, okay? The fact that the, that the town has, you know, commissioned this study, paid for this study, and it's now going to have a committee figuring out, you know, how to implement the stuff and how to pay for the stuff is great because, you know, once again, this makes it everybody's problem for dealing with stuff at this school, and it makes it, to me, much more likely that, you know, the funding that's needed will be, have many more voices, you know, thinking, yeah, we need to do that, and not just try to come from this one committee. So, I will, I'll go to this meeting next week, and generally what I do afterwards is just send out some notes if there's anything of particular relevance. It's not meant to be discussion, because that, you know, you can't do that with open meeting law, we can have discussion at some point. At some point, it would be good to get Bob to come to one of these meetings for a, you know, update and discussion on where stuff stands, but I think that could wait a little bit. You know, probably sometime, you know, December, January, something like that might be useful. Um, but this is going on. I'll send you both the link to the full report and my sort of just extracting all the words about our school and take a look at it and just to, you know, get yourself educated. Because this stuff, I think we've got I think things are lining up to make some progress on this stuff over the next two, three, four, five years, something like that. And um, you know, we just want to make sure we're at the, we're at the, you know, we got we're not we're at the table. But we've got all the other players at the table too, um, making this happen. So I, I'm encouraged by it, even though it seems like a lot of work to do. But certainly, this building is way better shape than the old town hall, or the not, not the existing town hall, the old elementary school. That's got a lot. Did you say the meeting next week was that the capital, capital plan improvement? Capital, capital planning, planning, planning committee. Okay, so it's not a specific one on the, the report. It's their standard. It's just no, but the meeting's being held because now the report is out. And so I'm sure it's going to be like, okay, let's start talking about how we're going to, you know, what we got to do. Okay. And, and I'm not a member of the committee, but I'm, you know, you all, I mean, I could be because there is legally a spot on it for a school committee member. But then that puts me in the situation of having to um, basically feel, you know, like I've got to be educated on all the other buildings too, and I'm not really a building person. So it's just, I feel like I'm, you know, it's better for me just to show up at the meetings and they know where I'm coming from. But, you know, it, it worked okay last winter, and that's, that's my intention this year too. So, and again, I just try and let you all know because I'm, you know, it's important that we all be on board with what's going on here. And you too, because you know you see stuff in the school, and you know some of the things in that report were fairly minor things, and you know they would be, you know, that's their view of some little stuff that needs to be fixed too, and this will give that stuff more visibility too, and no stuff's been bugging you. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks. So just so I understand, you saw a list that Bob Lesko has. It has stuff on it, but not necessarily everything. <coughs> I think some of the stuff, so that list that Bob Lesko put together for us last spring and then was used uh, at, in some of the uh, capital planning meetings, where they, you know, looked at it, referred to it, but then this report that came out, um, what I heard you say is not everything that was on Bob's list was well, in all I know is All I know is 
the oil tank's not on. Well, there so, we you know, go. I the so that's things, not all. I looked at the three <laughs> things that we had been presented to this committee in, I think, at our May meeting as to, okay, we've got these three issues with the building, and what are we going to do, and if we got any money, you know, what do you want to do? And one of them was dealing with the, yeah. the problem with the septic uh, discharge unit, and we took care of that. And one was dealing with the oil tank and the lack of a gauge and then sensors that might be failing and we sort of we thought we had some money to do some stuff on that but it turns out we didn't and then the third one uh, had to do with the uh, repair it to the boiler and uh, we got one thing fixed that we had it like you know we got covered by town insurance but there's still other stuff that you know, you know more <coughs> prevented needs to be done. So if maybe there was action to reconcile some of these things. Well, right. I think the logical first step is when you send me a report, I'm gonna ask for Bob's report. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Just, just, to, exactly. just to make sure exactly. just to make sure that if you don't have they ran off Bob's information, I don't know yeah. it was completely independent or they yeah. No, he was here when they were doing the tour. So we can see if they either missed something or yeah. right. Okay. But I think you know, so it's moving forward and uh, I think it's going to be, you know, it's, it's none of it's going to be easy, but I think it it's needs to be done, and we're we're in the right place at this moment. We're going in the right direction. Yeah, we have. Uh, it's, it's the beginning of the new year, so that's new stuff. Why are you right? No. Uh, next week. Are you I am, yep. You are? I believe so. Right? Oh, that's good because I saw my name next to it. I didn't realize that was me. Oh. Uh, maybe, maybe Your name's me. next to it. Yeah. I don't know how. Pete's name's next to it. Yeah. I don't know how. I was a little surprised to see it. Were you not at the meeting? Because that's how you probably got on. I'll try not to skip those meetings when they go on other positions. Because you are the frontier rep. Yeah. Or frontier rep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, you want to be on it, If you, uh, well, I, I'm, I, it's, why not? Sure. I mean, I've done it before. No. Keep going, uh, keep going, fight it. Unless it was somebody else. Else, <laughs> yeah. that's not all fighters. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good group. It's you know, uh, um, it's not that much of a commitment because the other one. Is it something the chair can just redesignate it or different? Change it anytime. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's <laughs> do that. All right. <laughs> Um, just I pretty much touched on everything: new hires, summer program, summer maintenance. On the back day, included on a, on a Tuesday, September fourth, the state primary elections were held for a town here at Summerlin Elementary School. Um, primary elections happen every couple of years and it, it proves to be a challenge for students and staff for all the uh, um, hoops that we set up um, for that day and hiring police officers and locking interior doors and you know if you think about it we are on um, complete lockdown when students are here for 179 days of the year and then on the Sunday maybe a day uh, the doors are front doors are open for for our public um, so just something to consider and um, discussions have started with town officials to possibly look at changing the voting location in the town so um, for where the library possibly the library yeah, yeah. that's the only other right. one that's got easy uh, acceptability and, and from my understanding is um, they would need to replace the voting equipment um, the boots mm -hmm. to make it work. Um, yeah, they could, they could. The only other thing that I've ever seen is discussing a professional development day during that time. Yeah. So we do that for November. So November election day is a professional development day. Yeah. So 
You mean a whole day or half day? It's the whole, so there's always been a whole day, I want to say that based on past practice, there's always been a whole day in October, near the end of October, and what they did is they moved that to election day. I think the last presidential election, maybe even before that, um, they made that the professional development day. It made sense because the kids out of the building was within the same, within a week period. Um, if we were to make this day a PD day, Sunderland's the only counter district where voting is held at the school. Um, it, it wasn't always so that way, but it is now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just you're talking to the town about that, or? Yeah. I, um, and uh, I'm in touch with Wendy Rule, and uh, she has um, talked with uh, Tom. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. I, I mean, we're a couple of years out from the next primaries. But, yeah, it's a lot. The, oh, yeah, and the, the town, the annual town elections are on a Saturday. On a Saturday? Yeah. I was trying to remember if it was a Friday or Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's really just the primaries. Okay. I know that uh, there's a lot of there's a statistically significant effect where uh, issues around schools fare better with voters when the voting location is a school. That's just one of them to consider. Mm -hmm. It's the only time some people actually ever get in here. But it still is. Pretty, so you shouldn't do it at the local jail. You should be at the school. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very nice job. <laughs> you know, and, and there's, there's two two sides of it, right? So it's this is the hub of our community, the elementary schools. Um, and then there's also the safety side of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, with, with that being said, we did have two police officers on duty throughout throughout the day and during recess, during arrival, during drop off, which were the busiest times, during the school day, our parking lot at least. Um, but you know, I, I think we can go in many different directions with those is it dis how disruptive is it in terms of the actual education? Plan? It's not disruptive to the actual education. It just concerns it's about more basically safety. Um, important dates coming up. We have uh, our first PTO meeting of the year tomorrow night at 6.30 in the cafeteria. Early release day, uh, fall lock and roll to school day is on Thursday, September 27th. Um, lock and roll to school day is when um, many members of our student and staff, um, parent body, uh, either walk or ride their bike to school. Um, it's a celebration of fitness and healthy lifestyle choices. Uh, later that day, um, that morning actually, is our first lockdown drill, which is an announced drill at 9.30 a.m. Um, I send out um, a, uh, a letter summarizing the various safety drills that take place at some of the school in the course of the year. Um, just to let parents know and lock, lockdown drills are included on that. Um, we always make sure the first lockdown drill is, is announced. Um, discussions are held with students in advance. Communication is held with parents in advance. Anytime we have a, a special drill like that, um, other than a fire drill, let's say, um, I, I'll, I will give parents a, a heads up the day of that it took place. And you know, if there's ever any questions, feel free to get back to them. First two Monday in uh, October is our school council meeting. Uh, that's the first one of the year at 315. The next evening is open house on October 2nd. Um, that week also at the joint School committee meeting, more early release days, and school picture day is October 10th. Any questions for the principal's report? Thank you. Jones report? report. We're passing around at the same time the warrants to be signed. I'm not sure procedure here, how we do it, but mm -hmm. I'm sure you can, my report's not so enlightening that you can't sign warrants. <laughs> um, I just want to, uh, we had, obviously we're going to 
few weeks in now, but we've got a smooth opening to all the schools. I just wanted to introduce the new, um, in our, you know, I consider ourselves a greater district, not just our um, one elementary school district here, but um, we have Christine Curtin, who's new principal of our weight lead, and George Lanitas, who's new principal of our frontier, and Carol Nettie, who used to work at Frontier, who's now the assistant principal at Deerfield Elementary. And this obviously met Mark here, this evening. Um, I will be creating an entry plan, um, and I'll be presenting at the joint meeting next month. It's going to be a modified plan, basically, because I'm in term, but I also want to make sure that I have goals and direction for moving things forward, and not just um, sitting on the status quo. You guys already uh, talked about the conference, the uh, MASC, MASX conference. I'll be going to that. So, have a great time here. Um, Software update. The second page of the, or maybe it's the second or third page, depending on how it was stapled together. You know, I like to um, kind of give an update on all the software updates that are happening throughout the district um, at all the elementary schools. I think it's interesting to see all the things that the IT department is doing. Um, you know, overall software, you know, district wise, at 1.5 million, I think we've invested in software. So when you start talking about it, it's not just hardware; it's setting up the computers that they're doing. When you kind of read through that, you can kind of get an idea of what the schools are doing, what was done here. It just it just kind of gives you kind of an idea of the scope of the work they do because they do they do work hard, and, and, and Scott Paul and his crew does a, do a great job um, under that. And we're grateful to have his leadership in that. So um, I just wanted to kind of throw that kudo out there. Um, Oh, I, I kind of I started I read software and I went straight to IT update. Um, we are using Infinite Vision software now, um, and I don't know how much was talked about it here um, it, last year, but basically it's giving the ability for Ben to now to go straight into all principles, but particularly this, this is Ben to go right in and see his budget, um, what is encumbered, pretty much live. You know, crazy or not, that's not what was happening in the last 50 years. Uh, if Ben wanted to know what a balance was, he would have to call over the central office. I mean, you would have internal balances um, kept at his office, but to have the exact where things stood, you had to call over. So you can imagine the second half of the year, with a lot of calls and emails trying to figure things out. Now he can kind of keep an idea of himself. Um, there is a learning curve on that. We've already done some press development with Mark on that in the IT group as we're trying to set up the different permissions, make sure you can't overdraw accounts. There's a lot of safeguards that are put in place with the software. So. It's taking us into the next generation. We're already kind of a generation behind because we should have probably done that years ago, but um, it's, a good, it's a good first step. And so I don't know if there's any comments on that, but uh, you like it, right? Love it. Love it? All right. I was just going to ask, though, like in terms of encumbered and things, like, like to what extent, like salary, you know, teacher salary, and it's like how, how old will that, does that, can that be encumbered in advance, and, or you know? It, it can't. It hasn't yet. Um, but that's a goal. Okay. And that's really that's sixty to seventy percent of your budget. Right. And it's a really a good tool to know once you finish your hiring where your budget lines stand. I mean, right now, what we end up doing is looking at a separate Excel spreadsheet, comparing it to the budget, seeing where we stand. Where it's when you come to you have to do that. And it's a little bit of a task, and we it. I guess when it rolled in this year, it wasn't kind of set up to do it that way, but we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. And with all our very new hires, we're okay as far as having the salary money to pay for all. At this point, yes, yeah. Okay. You, I'm assuming you would have said it if we weren't. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the last thing is that a uh, little side project I'm working on that was um, is the files over at Christian Lane. They're, the Frontier Committee is. Um, in the final stages of selling that building, um, they have a purchase and sale, but there are a lot of Sunderland files there, and so um, I'm working with vendors on to what we're going to do with them, but um, I just bring it to everybody's attention. There is a lot of files, and our, my, currently my goal is to keep them together. There's been some talk about sending them back to the town so that they belong in, um, but um, the central office uses all the files, and so um, there's tractor trailer loads. We've already, you know, the weeding and whatnot. Um, are there been, are you get, determining if there's some that don't need to still be we kept? Yeah, last Wednesday we shredded three tons. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there was already, I think, I think Ron had told me there was already 10 tons shredded last year. 
So it, it was just one of those things when you had space, yeah. there was no need to, yeah. um, you know, lead as much as we have to now. And so um, I had a meeting with the vendor, uh, I just met with them last Friday regarding trying to bring, move the files out of there, get them organized in a more retrievable system and a rotating system because some files can be destroyed after seven years, some files you have to hold on for forever. Which files can be digitized? Which files have to be photographed? It's a kind of a, and what should we do based on cost and, and that kind of thing? So the Frontier um, Committee has money set aside to deal with part of this file problem. So um, okay, Patty actually took care of that. It was a smart thing by his part. Um, to put some money aside to do that. So there is a little bit of money to take care of that. But I'm just saying that they are, some of the elementary files are sitting over in waiting in that building. So, have you ever talked to any of the town courts because they've got the same problem dealing with the town files? Using the same, uh, not using because I've been selected by but I consulted with the same vendors that, that Deerfield has used and I believe some of them may have used them as well. So if there's a few vendors in the area that do certain things from shredding to this. Yeah, so, um, we're looking at the different proposals now. Okay, we got a nice size bulk, but I'm not sure whether it's 10% full or 50% full or 90% full. And we reach out and find out. Well, you know, we have to be some. What the rental look like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions on that? Okay. Thanks. Are we all set? Thank you. That is that. All right. I think it's the uh, motion to adjourn. End of it. Yeah. Agenda. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Outstanding. All in favor? All right. Unanimous. Right.